It is, uh, honestly, it's great to be back with you guys today, uh, getting a chance to get ready um, this time of year. Uh, definitely an exciting week. So for us, uh, the challenge for our team goes right back to it. And what are the areas we can improve upon? Uh, each of the players will have some things to work on specifically. Coaches, players, everybody as we're getting this game plan together and getting going. So uh, I thought there were some really clear demonstrations of that last week in terms of improvement. Uh, I can remember specifically asking Alex Mack, you know, what does your better look like? And the things that he wanted to improve upon in the game, we showed some of those yesterday to the team. So um, all of us are, uh, are fired up to get a chance to play this game uh, in front of our city and our fans. And uh, we're growing as a team, and I think uh, our fans are growing with us. So uh, we couldn't have been more excited to have uh, officially uh, the last game uh, at the Dome. And, uh, man, are we pumped to be a part of that. So uh, with that, I'll be glad to open up your questions. Uh, but, man, we are, uh, we're totally pumped to have this game here uh, with our fans. Dan, can you talk about this challenge with this Green Bay team, what you've seen from Aaron Rodgers on film from the first time around? And plus, both, both teams are different, of course, but... Just talk about that. Yeah, for sure. The uh, I think that's, that's a great way for you to uh, to segue into it. Both teams are different. I think both teams, uh, from when we played before, are a better version of what they were at that time. And for years, you know, just Rogers, all the difficult uh, routes and matchups that go along with it, inside the pocket, outside the pocket, finding the open guys. Uh, there's a number of guys, much like our offense, that get involved. They throw to tight ends, they throw to running backs, in addition to you know the terrific receivers they have. So uh, we know we have our hands full. Um, in terms of the matchups, but uh, honestly, one, uh, you know, as, as we're getting into our preparation, as we're getting going, uh, both sides have uh, matchups all over, so it's going to be a heck of a game. Do you stress it's, even more to finish now, given the way Rodgers always pulls it off at the end of games? Yeah, it, it, I think just through the years, there's been, uh, in my own coaching against Green Bay, um, there's been a number of times where it totally comes right down to the finish. So uh, we expect that going in, that it's going to come down right to the end. Uh, these kind of games usually do. And when they're evenly matched, two tough opponents, go both teams battling for it. So uh, we do expect it you know, to go down to the end. Uh, he is one of the very best at that. And uh, you know, for us, that's a terrific challenge. Coach, talk about how this defense has grown. You know, Seattle comes out that long drive to start the game. And then really, if we contain them for the most part to the end of the game, Talk about the growth of the defense. I probably have to look back and say maybe there's been a switch, um, maybe five, six games um, over the last five or six games, uh, and I felt that speed improve. Um, we had a difficult game at Philadelphia, went on a bye, readjusted some things, but honestly, the one thing I can really point to is our communication allows us to play faster. And when those alerts happen, um, when we're communicating uh, across the ball, uh, it allows you to play that much faster where I may have an idea that a play is coming or a formation there. Now I'm able to share it over to you and you back to me. And so to have that accountability to each other has been really important. You have to go through some of that. Uh, you need the reps. Um, some of the things that we uh, struggled with early on, especially defensively, was that communication to make sure it can be on point. So uh, that part, I think we're a lot closer uh, to being who we can be. Uh, the second part of that, I think we're doing a better job attacking the football. And uh, I don't know, maybe for maybe the last eight or ten games or so, uh, we've gotten it out. We've knocked a few off them, to, you know, to try and flip that turnover margin. Uh, I've often spoke about the turnover margin is a team stat. And uh, so for us offensively owning it, uh, the way that we cover on defense uh, and on teams and on defense, uh, that's for sure going to be a factor again this weekend. Teams have changed since the first meeting. One thing hasn't changed, mentioned this earlier, is uh, Aaron Rodgers' elusiveness. Yep. I think he did most of his damage against you guys outside of the pocket. I ask you the same question I asked last week, but for us, you know, the balance between being aggressive at the point after, but not letting him outside. Yeah, and uh, that's where the, the the chess match, you know, takes place. Do you assign somebody to him? Which downs can you do that? Which downs can you not afford to do that? Because um, when you do do that, obviously there's some other areas that uh, he's going to go after. So he's that type of player that you better have some different looks um, to not just play the same thing, you know, down and down out. Um, He's, you know, experienced to speed up the tempo when he would like to, uh, to back off the tempo, uh, to be outside the pocket, to be inside the pocket. So um, I think that was on display last night. They started the game quick um, and can change their tempo within a drive, much like we do. Um, so offensively, when you have the quarterback that's able to do that, get in and out of tempo, change personnel, get on the line, stay, use cadence, uh, it's a factor for sure. Coach Julio plays with a lot of pain throughout his career as a Falcon. Is it going to be just about his pain threshold this week? 
Yeah, for us, uh, we're going to stick with the same plan. We'll limit them, um, you know, throughout the week, and then as the week, you know, progresses, we'll give them a little more at the end. Uh, that's the plan, you know, from last week. That'll be the plan uh, moving forward for us. So um, he's excited to play, and uh, but we'll make sure he gets the looks that are real specific to him. Um, but you know, for him and his foot, uh, he'll be ready to rock. Yeah, now that you've had a chance to digest the tape, uh, how impressive was the offensive line performance against a defense you know really well? Into? Yeah, and I thought uh, across the board, we knew this was going to have to have balance in our last game. Um, you know, the run games, although some of them uh, you hit for long, some of them you may get two or three or four yards runs, but there's a byproduct that goes to that. We didn't have a lot of success on the keepers, but the play action was an effective part of that. So um, as we go through it, I think it's been a real factor that we've been able to have these five guys line up at the same spot each week. And uh, for us, that's been a significant factor. And we give uh, Alex a lot of credit because um, he was new to this group, but they also there's been a lot of improvement from our guards with Chester and Levitre, and then outside with Schrader and Matthew. So now a whole year in the off season together, a whole you know training camp together. Now through the season, you can imagine how all those reps they accumulate and the technique it gets sharper and sharper and sharper as you go. And we'll have a big emphasis on that again this week. The tight end tackle combinations, the guard center combinations, the guard tackle combinations. How quick can they be? How clean can they be? And uh, then it goes into the protection side of things, that communication, recognizing the blitzes. Now, when you get to that spot arch uh, where the communication can happen just on a look, yeah, I know what's coming. We've, we've already hit that one. So they do a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, they, they come in early a number of times a week that they just meet as a group together, go through the blitzes, go through some things that they want to walk through. Um, it's been an impressive group. Uh, you can see the connection they have for one another. Even though the stakes get higher each week, how important is the normalcy of the process each week for you guys? Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that one up uh, because uh, that process, that standard that we have of getting ready, um, not only is it important for the player, it's also important for the teammate because we recognize you help get your teammate ready. It's the look that's right. It's the way you push. Uh, but we have a real routine that we like to go through to get ready. And that Wednesday, that Thursday, that Friday, that Saturday, um, that process for us doesn't change. And uh, we know that the process will reward you, but you've got to put the work in. And I said after our game this past week, I thought our game was won last week during the week. And I wish everybody could have seen that practice Wednesday and Thursday and the speed and the effort and the attitude that we were going after it. Uh, we all went into the game with a lot of confidence based on the work that we did during the week. And uh, that's what I love. One of the things I, I most admire about our team is the approach that we come out to work with um, when we're going against one another. Yeah, we thought the uh, the errors that we had uh, were certainly correctable. Uh, take no credit away from uh, Seattle and, and their performance on that, but we did feel like uh, there were some things that we did that are correctable, and uh, we addressed those yesterday. And and we'll we'll put that emphasis on the things that we want to improve upon uh, from a team standpoint uh, into that. There were definitely some things that we did well. Uh, almost the same return where we tackled him inside the 20 uh, when we didn't do it right on another one went all the way back the other way so uh, such a clear reminder for all of us uh, that's you know you've heard me use here before do right longer and uh, so for each guy in their role knowing they can nail it so um, sometimes we need those reminders and uh, we certainly had them yesterday you mentioned Julio, and obviously all eyes will be on him this week. And, uh, but you seem to indicate no doubt that he'll be ready to go yep. on Sunday. Is that is that a fair say? And, and talk about how he deals with kind of he's had these issues all year and how he, he kind of. I think that helps, honestly, when you uh, have had the opportunity to play through some injuries. Uh, just like anything else, you have ex experience doing that. I know what this foot feels like. I know uh, how I can explode and move on it. So just like anything else, when you have that experience of going through it, uh, the biggest challenge we have is making sure the practice reps are the right ones for him and Matt uh, so they get that, that clear connection on the routes that they need. So uh, we spent a lot of time on that to make sure as they go through the week, they both feel comfortable that the work that they had. He's obviously a guy that wants yes. He's obviously a guy that wants to play no matter what. How hard is it for you to try to hold him back? Uh, sometimes you just have to make the decision for him, and that was the case uh, at L.A. Um, where, you know, I said, all right, we're going to take it all the way out to the game. And uh, when I saw uh, where he didn't look like him, I said, I'll take this decision off you today. And uh, for that week, um, that wasn't his, his day to race. And uh, so we had to make that decision for him because he is that type of competitor for sure. You talked about the tempo with them, yep. Rodgers. Yep. He caught you the last he time. Did. Would a guy get 
running off the field. How much is that emphasized in practice? You know, because you do go through a lot of personnel switches on defense. Yep, and uh, for sure it's a factor. And uh, we've got to be really mindful of that. It's one of the best things. Uh, there's a number of things that they do. But in and out of tempo, um, and it's not just for this year. They've done this for a while. And it's like, well, how do they still catch somebody? And uh, sure enough, it happens. They have great uh, awareness for it, when to go attack, when not to. So uh, for all the defenses that go and compete against them, uh, it's always a, a real big topic. Kid around with Brooks a little bit this week and say, hey, don't do that again. Uh, for sure, that I don't know if we'd be kidding, but uh, <laughs> uh, I will say that the point will be stressed. And how's the D-line rotation change without uh, Adrian? Well, uh, as it goes through, you know, that, that's a factor for us. And uh, we do have good versatility because of Upshaw. He's able to play defensive end and defensive tackle, so we'll rely on him some more to play outside at defensive end. Past that, there won't be a lot of change um, other than using guys in a new versatile way. So we're, we're totally bummed for, for AC and uh, for a guy who really uh, busted his butt to come back from his knee uh, as quickly as he did. And just it was uh, one of the, for me, an emotional time. Uh, one of the guys that asked him, well, how did you get back so fast? Uh, from his knee and he said it in the meeting he said it was really easy for me he said just watching you guys work every day pushed me to get back faster I thought what a clear demonstration of like the love for his teammates so um, for him to get you know out for you know an injury for him that that was hard on on, on him and uh, certainly for his teammates because we all respect him so much so uh, definitely a string of bad luck for him definitely yes well, Dan you mentioned the um, um, Play, wanting to be at home for I mean, a lot of people, if you're looking at this matchup, maybe an argument can be made that, you know, Dallas on the road might have even, the way Green Bay's playing. Yeah. Uh, you seem to indicate that no, you know, we I, definitely want to, you know, the Falcons definitely want to be at home. The NFC Championship's a beast, and uh, it always is. So whoever you play, wherever you go, it's a battle. And uh, it's as much fun as you could possibly imagine um, when you get to do it uh, in front of your own fans. So wherever you go, wherever you play, it's a battle. And the players know that, and that's why, like, competing at such a high level when it's all on there for it, um, for me as a coach, it's one of the coolest parts of our job. And then for the players, it's the same. So whether you have to travel on the road or you get a chance to do it at home, uh, the competition level, um, it's as fun as you could possibly imagine. So what we're, you know, got a lot of, you know, we're pleased about is the fact that this dome is closing and we get to be a part of the last game here. Like talk about what a cool thing that is to be a part of last week. Is it, is it not? And uh, we're all, you know, kind of waiting. So. I think uh, over the last 25 years, a lot of football has been played in there. And uh, so for us to have this uh, one be the final one, we're pumped to be a part of that. How much is the home field an edge at this point in the, in the season for a game like this? When you have a crowd like ours, for sure it's an edge. And uh, I think anybody um, who was in that uh, you know, environment uh, last Saturday night, uh, I had people say, that's the loudest I've ever heard the Dome. And I said, all right. You know, like, that fired me up to know that we're going to bring the same energy they are. And uh, so for us to hear that, um, that pumped me up beyond belief to say that was as loud as they've heard it. And I said, all right, let's, if that was as loud as it can get, well, there's only one challenge out there then. All right, we hope that same comment uh, is happening again next week. Can we, can we turn it up again? One of the things that's been a little bit overlooked is what Julio did to Seattle's defense on the first offensive drive with this two big first down plays and the touchdown. How much do you think that set the tone for what you guys were able to do offensively? We always have a, a term who can set it off, and uh, it might happen on a kickoff return. It could happen defensively on a big stop uh, or a big run. So uh, all of them are trying to fight to be the one who can set it off, meaning, hey, we're going to get this game cranked off with a big play. And uh, a number of times uh, he has been the one to set it off. So oftentimes when you, you see us coming over to the sideline, you know, that we, we say that's how you set it off. And uh, for sure he's, he was one that uh, has set it off for us in a number of games. Dan Green Bay is another team that can you know, obviously spread the ball around on offense. Yeah. How big a loss, however, would Jory Nelson be if he's not a team player? Well, there's a number of things he does well. Um, the deep balls for him have been a factor. Uh, the precision in the routes, uh, the terrific hands. So, um, for sure, it's a factor. Every time you know, like a you know a guy that's not in your lineup that normally is, it's a factor. And 
you know, we have some on our end too. So um, as you go and you look at your matchups and you go battle for it, during the game, you don't think of those. Uh, but during the preparation, you know, um, both sides, you know, will we'll be without some guys. At this time of year, that's to be expected. And uh, whether he plays or not, you know, you know, not for us to decide. But, uh, you know, he, he's a factor. The only Claymore and Julio are the only two candidates. Yes. Yep. Just kind of going through the Rolodex in my brain right there. And uh, yes. Last question, guys. Dan, I know you've, you've talked a lot about the whole MVP situation yep. with, with, with Matt. Just getting to this point, I mean, how happy are you just in general terms that he's kind of shut people up? You know, that, that kind of. You, you know, know what I'm always happy about is uh, when you see somebody really apply themselves and really go for it. Um, to get to a new level when you're already at a really high level, so like to take another step to break through a new ceiling, it's really difficult. And he totally owned that challenge to do that. Uh, that's from on-field performance. That's from a leadership on and off the field, uh, the connection he has with his teammates, the things he wanted to improve in his game. And then it's kind of like a New Year's resolution. Do you stay with it or do you not back off? And he's had the grit to not back off and to keep striving to get to a new spot, to keep working on the same thing. So those are some things that maybe everybody else wouldn't know about uh, that makes me most proud of him because he has not stopped backing off. He's finding things to improve upon in his game. That was the case during the bye. Uh, you felt it in his intent. That was the, you know, the same thing last week. And it'll be the same thing this week. Uh, he's very locked into the process of getting ready. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I am pumped up for him in a big way. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. I don't know if you've looked at the coaching matchup here. Good to get an experienced one of this uh, group left here. Uh, I don't know. Does that, when you get to this point of year, does that, does that matter at all with some of the experience that these other three No, honestly, have? I just lock into the game. And uh, like I said, just like I'll tell the players, you know, the thing we want to look at right now is this week and how everything goes in to get ready. We'll leave talking about for other things for another time. <laughs> but for this week, for this team, for this moment, uh, our intent is getting ready, and that's pushing each other to get ready. So we're not going to change our process, so uh, I won't look past that. Uh, that would do uh, certainly none of us any good. So how good can we get this week? That's the challenge. I just want to ask you about covering. You, know, you see the play Rodgers makes last night at the end of the game where you know, he's scrambling around. Uh, what's the emphasis of you know the PBs this week? Could just stand with your guy covering the covers? Yeah, the term we use is plaster, and uh, so when a guy gets outside, um, just like Seattle does, where there's routes that can convert based on the quarterback scrambling. So it's a difficult thing to practice because uh, oftentimes when the route changes based on where the quarterback is at, uh, but we'll do our best to do that. Uh, for sure, anytime you face a quarterback that can get out of the pocket, it's always an emphasis. Anyone else? All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.